one of your many books, Ken, is Right Time. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you say that the world can be divided into two people, productive people and non-productive people. And that you say productive people have a love affair with time. So I would love to know what makes someone uh, on the right side of time, whereas what makes someone sort of time is their enemy. Um, well, yeah, that's a very good question <laughs> and put in a very intelligent way that makes it hard to figure out the handle on it because time is uh, time is this it, it doesn't really exist I mean time is a human construct we we created time uh, squirrels and you know chipmunks don't have much idea of time and they know the sun rises and the sun goes down and they know that it rains but they don't think the way we do where you know, they don't keep track of their birthdays for example like only humans do that and it's unfortunate because you know you're only as old as you think you are that's the way a squirrel looks at it and nobody's arguing with the squirrel about it you know but but humans know better and people some people look at time as the enemy and some people look at it as a friend there, there's an old spanish saying that says there's more time than life which i always thought was a wonderful way of looking at it because it's that's what a productive person would say there is more time than life. And uh, another Spanish or Italian saying says that l life is, long, is, is short but wide. And, and that's another way that productive look at it. Like people say, how could you do as much stuff as you do? Well, because that's what I do. I don't do anything else. And I used to give classes on time management and do a lot of studies on it. In fact, right time is filled with time management theories and one of the things I noticed about people is they had no idea where their time went and and they go I don't know where you get find all the time and I would say like I don't know where you lose it I mean we all have the same amount of time and I go how much time do we have by the way how many hours are in a week and like two out of ten people can answer that question right off the top of their heads because they've never really multiplied 24 times 7 and realize exactly how many hours there are in a week. And so everyone has the same amount of time. So what I would do in a time management class at UCLA or elsewhere is I would say, let's keep chart your time this, this week. I just want you to make a chart of what you do with your time. And let's come in and uh, talk about it next week when we come back together and they would come back in. And, uh, and that was before I asked them how many hours were in a week. I would wait for the third week to ask that question. And they would, some people would come in with 98 hour weeks and some people would come in with 62 hour weeks. Nobody seemed to agree in general how many hours there were in a week because the hours they gave me didn't add up. They didn't make sense. You know, they'd say, I sleep like six hours a week, but it turned out in the third week of analysis that they're actually, I mean, six hours a day, it would turn out that actually they were sleeping 10 hours a day. They just were telling themselves they slept six hours a day. How much time do you spend talking on the telephone? So most people thought they spent maybe 15 minutes a day when in fact they might, they might be an hour a day that they're spending on that. And watching television, of course. Some people were saying that they only spent maybe an hour a day when they were really spending three hours a day. And, but but a, a productive person knows exactly how long it takes to do something. Like when I write a screenplay or a book, I, I can tell you how many hours it takes to, to do it. And so I know that I can get it done in a certain amount of time. I mean, Agatha Christie apparently wrote as many as 10 books a year. She had to use four or five pen names because she just kept writing. When you think about it, writing is a function of how fast do you type. You know, because if you have your, I always say, in my writing book, including that one, I always say, if you don't, if you make it a rule not to sit down to write before you know what you're going to write, then you'll never waste any time and you'll never have a writer's block. So simply don't sit down until you know what you're going to write. Then it's just a matter of how fast can you type. So it's better to be walking along the, the beach thinking about the structure of your story than it is to be wasting a lot of time sitting in front of a computer typing stuff and throwing it away and all that stuff just figure it all out in your head and well what if I forget it well guess what if you forget it that's probably good 
you're forgetting forgettable things. You won't forget it when it starts getting really good because then it'll do what Faulkner said, it'll start haunt, haunting you and you won't be able to forget it. And then you'll just write it down. William Saborian was asked once how long it took him to write the human comedy because somebody had told the journalist that it took him three days above drugstore. And he said, no, I, it took me all my life to write it. I, it just took me three days to type it out. And, and that's, so if you're productive, you've already figured out that there are certain things that are completely unproductive, such as sitting in front of a blank screen trying to figure out what to put down next and other ways to do things that make you productive. And productive people don't waste their time. As I said, when it comes to waiting, you don't wait, you just do something else. You, what I call it, rotate from one thing to another so that you still have, you have new energy constantly all day because you're switching activities. And when you switch to a new activity, you have new energy just because of that. But you're also pulling energy from the previous activity that's kind of pulling you back and wanting you to do more on it. But that's good instead of listening to it and going back and doing more on the previous activity. It's better to have that kind of little anxiety going on there because then the next time that activity gets a chance at your time, it'll be ready and it'll be more productive during that time compartment. So I, I think that's the whole difference is between productive and unproductive people have never figured out how to use time. They don't even know how to measure time. And, and they, confuse, they confuse things. I mean, there are two functions in life or two entities that we deal with. One is time and the other is work. And one of them is, in, is eternal and, and timeless and endless. And the other one is not. And, but people get it wrong. The one that's timeless and endless and eternal is work, not time, unless you're God, you know. But if you're not God, then guess what? You have a limited amount of time. And the only problem is you don't know what the limit is, but that doesn't matter because you just have to operate anyway. But what's infinite is work because good work produces more work. And so does bad work, right? So no matter what kind of work you're doing, it keeps going and you cannot manage it, therefore, because it's a, it's a given that you can't manage an infinite thing. But you can manage something that is finite, and that's time. So managing time is what we have to do. And, and let's say if you're writing a book and you know that you type seven pages an hour at least, then you give yourself one hour every day to write your book. Well, at the end of 100 days, you've got you know, how many pages? 700 pages, right? So it's, it's not complicated to figure it out, but you have to manage the right thing. You're managing your time because the work will happen only if you give it time to, to attend to it. And what happens is that people procrastinate because they, they think they're trying to manage the work and they, they don't know that you can't manage the work. Like, I'm going to get this book done if it takes me all summer, and then nothing happens, they don't do it. That, that isn't what you should do. You need to say, I am gonna work from seven to eight every morning, you know, without fail for X five days a week, it's better than seven days a week because your brain revolts when you make it stop something that it's actually enjoying. So if you make it stop after the fifth day, it's very upset and it spends the whole weekend thinking about the project and it's really raring to go on Monday when you start again. Whereas if you keep it going, it'll get worn out and it'll get bored eventually because that's what brains do. So it, it, that's, so productive, th there's two kinds of productive people too. You know, the unproductive ones, let's not talk about. I mean, they have their own thing going and I hope they're enjoying life. But productive people are divided into two kinds and those are the happy ones and the unhappy ones. The unhappy ones are the ones who've never figured out the psychology of creativity. And so they're constantly surprised by it and upset by it. And that's why you have Virginia Woolf and Hemingway and, and you know Sylvia Plath offing themselves at the end because they, they, they've never figured it out. They've never figured out that at the end of a project, they're gonna get depressed and they're going to go into this postpartum depression that they may never come out of. But 
if if you're on the other side of the thing, the happy, productive person, you figured that out already. So what do you do? Before you end a project, you start another project. And then you can't wait to get into the new project, so you don't mind finishing the first project. So you've eliminated postpartum depression. And that's simply because you figured out how your creative mind works, which is what writer's time you know, is all about. And that's what I mean by, you know, productive, happy productive versus unhappy productive people. You don't have to be miserable and suicidal to be a writer. You can be perfectly happy by knowing your system and not letting it do it to you.